Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. Joining me today in studio, we have uh, Jeremy Threckeld with uh, Virtue Capital Management over in Brentwood. They are like the advisor to advisors, and we've got a, we're have got we really thrilled to have them as uh, partners. And then also we have joining us uh, Phil Cosmala with Tabor Cosmala, and uh, we got Phil on the phone, and we're going to get started. Phil, I'm going to jump right in, so I want to get as much uh, out for everyone as we possibly can. So we're going to start with that first slide. Uh, why the 10% rally in October? And maybe you can fill us in on that. Yeah, Hank, it's, it's really simple. We look, look at a lot of indicators, technical, economic, fundamental indicators, um, analyzing Fed speak and what they're saying. But I think the start of this rally that we had off the of September 30th lows can be explained by two simple factors. Number one, the Phillies did not win the World Series. Uh, <laughs> and number two, the McRib is back on the menu. So I think our first chart here, we started a little tongue-in-cheek humor yeah. given the uncertainty that we've had. And as Jeremy mentioned in the prior segment, uh, the unusual volatility and nowhere to run or hide with the exception of cash or energy equities. Um, but we're thankful the Phillies did not win the World Series. <laughs> Nearly every major financial collapse and recession that we've had in the history of this country, Inc., it coincided with the Phillies or the Philadelphia Athletics, the predecessor to the uh, Phillies, mm -hmm. uh, winning the World Series. So you go back to that, that data goes back to 1910. And on the right hand of the side, the right hand side of this chart, coincidentally, the um, uh, when the McRib is on the menu, stocks have had twice the return of the of the uh, market when the McRib is not on the menu. So I think those are two uh, important factoids for everyone listening in today. Hey? But there we go. Uh, we start that with tongue in. We start that tongue in cheek, but the real reason mm -hmm. for the uh, for the rally off the September lows are in bear market territory, Hank. And I know when I've been on prior on the on the show with you, um, we've talked about how unusual this year has been. When you think we started the year, uh, stocks hit an all time high on January fourth. Yeah. Bond market was yielding one and a half percent, and then we had Omicron dis uh, disrupt supply chains around the globe in January. Then we fast forward in February, we had Russia Ukraine. Then in the second quarter, we had China going to zero COVID, the world's second largest economy just completely shutting down in the impacts that that had on supply chains around the globe. Despite all that, Hank, we were only down, the S&P was only down 10% in early June. Unfortunately, the fourth shock this year is the one that sent both stock and bar markets into a, a tailspin. And our next chart was, uh, it was Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, making the yeah. proclamation after saying in May that 75 basis point increment hikes of the Fed funds rate would be a sign of panic. And lo and behold, the Fed chair and the, and the FOMC decided to panic at four consecutive meetings with mm -hmm. 75 basis point hikes. And yeah. that uh, sent both stock and bond markets into a tailspin, Hank. Yeah. Now, we have had a rally. And the main reason for that rally, Hank and Jeremy, is, is pretty simple, is we finally got some good news on the inflation front. And I think if we look at our next slide, um, mm -hmm. we, we're, uh, Mark Twain famously said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Yeah. And I think when we go back in the annals of time, the only other two times in the history of the country where we've seen the Federal Reserve woefully behind, behind the inflation curve mm -hmm. and racing to play catch up and not, uh, not paying any attention to their second mandate, which is uh, price stability is the first, but full employment is the second. Mm -hmm. In our next slide, Hank, shows yeah, let's go um, to the next the last, slide, only, only two times in the history of the country where the Fed has been so far behind the curve was 1974. Yep. You can see that shaded area on the left-hand side in 1980. Mm -hmm. right. um, so at that point in time, the Federal Reserve started gunning interest rates up uh, to help quell, uh, to help at least damp, uh, or dampen the inflationary pressures that were building in the economy in 74 as well as 1980. And I think history doesn't repeat itself, but it often does rhyme, yeah. uh, to quote Mark Twain once again. And Hank, I think when we see what started the rally, the green bar here, mm -hmm. what started the rally in stocks was when the red bar inflation yeah. started to roll over. So when that red line rolled over, that was the key for stocks to bottom in 1975. Mm -hmm. And it was also the bottom of the the, uh, the fall in equity prices in 1980. Yep. So, uh, you know, those are the only two analogs that we really have to what this Federal Reserve is trying to engineer this go around, mm -hmm. which is to raise unemployment, 
uh, to help stop this in the inflationary pressures that we've had for the past 12 months. Yeah, and this is one of the things, uh, unfortunately, uh, the worry is that they they get over they are overly aggressive they overshoot the mark and uh, we send a crash in a little bit and we get into a, a longer deeper recession. Absolutely, Hank. and I think you know we're kind of at that point where in in June we were down ten percent as I mentioned a few seconds ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a normal run of the mill correction. I think for everyone listening in today. 10% corrections have happened about once every 15 months for the past 100 years. That 10% drop in stock prices is just part and parcel of investing. Uh, they they sure. come for no reason, Hank. They, 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 fears come out of left field, fears of war, fears of other types of geopolitical strife. Mm -hmm. And you can see a 10% correction in very short order, they're routine. But 20% corrections are really rare. And I think mm -hmm. when we look back at these bear markets, Hank, yeah. this one is highly unusual because we have not entered a recession. Um, so I know there's a lot of fear of recession, but we have generational low unemployment right now at 3.6%. We have uh, S&P with top line sales growth of 12% right now. And those aren't recessionary indicators, Hank. And so for the, us to have a 20% fall in stock prices like we had through the end of September, that's only happened three times in the history of the country where we've had a 20% drop in stock prices without an accompanying recession. Hmm. And uh, two of those three times were the fear of World War III, Hank. That was 1962, Bay of Pigs, Cuban Missile Crisis, and then 1966, the invasion of Hanoi. Um, so we go back in the annals of time and studying that history to be students of the market. And I think when you look at those, those periods of time, they were pretty unique, the fear of war. Um, obviously it's going to cause a, a retracement of stock prices and some fear, mm -hmm. but ultimately markets are dictated by whether or not we're heading into a recession. And Hank, our next chart, I think this is really critical, mm -hmm. is we charted every single recession, every single bear market are on our next chart going back to World War II. Yeah, so Kristen, when go you ahead see, to that when next one, please. Yeah, when you see stock there prices fall, Hank, yep. there's a... You typically see a rally, and again, it was kind of that 10% rally, or we're now you know, a little bit north of a 10% rally that we've seen here through, uh, through mid-November. But normally you get that uh, bounce off the bottom, but the path forward, when you get to the fork in the road, take it, I'll, I'll quote another famous economist, Yogi Berra, yeah. um, <laughs> when you get to the fork in the road, take it, and we're at that inflection point right now. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting because it looks at every single, this chart looks at every single bear market going back to World War II. And you do get to that inflection point. We're there right now, Hank. Yeah. Does the market continue this uptrend? If it does, the reason for that would be that we're not entering a recession, that this is just a slowdown, uh, a fear of a recession, that it wasn't warranted. And then that black line is, is paid off where we've had abnormally high returns for the next 12 months. The, yeah. Conversely, though, the blue line, Hank, is, is if the Federal Reserve does tighten, and yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with this, if the Federal Reserve does continue to tighten, despite the fact that we're seeing signs of these uh, inflationary pressures abating, then we've got then we've got a problem. That blue line, uh, that the, mm -hmm. the kind of bluish line there, Hank, yeah. that's the one that would be indicative if the Fed does tighten us into a recession. Um, and unfortunately, Chairman Powell and the various Fed members that have been on the speaking circuit have been giving conflicting signs. Markets hate uncertainty. Right. And this Federal Reserve, Hank, has done nothing but give us more uncertainty. But I think for the key for everyone uh, watching today is the black line or the blue line, which path, which fork in the road do we ultimately take? Mm -hmm. Normally, we make investment decisions and the team at Virtue Capital Management, um, I think we're, we're looking as an investment committee and making decisions for client portfolios mm -hmm. because we're understanding where we're at in the business cycle. Are we entering a recession? Never in my career, Hank, spanning 30 years, have I seen an environment where the outcome is solely dependent upon not just the Federal Reserve, but how the Federal Reserve is interpreting the inflation data. I mean, and when that's you look, what's unique to this period, and that's why we've yeah. had so much uncertainty and so much volatility. You know, to your point, Phil, when we look at this graph and we're, you know, it's kind of like we're, we're at that point where you're taking the deep breath to see, it, it seems to me anyway, that uh, what's going to happen in, in uh, December is where we're going to get closer to knowing which, uh, which fork here we're going to be looking, or which path off this fork we're going to be looking at. Uh, absolutely. I think that's well summarized. When we look at, we have another inflation data point at the end of this month, something called, that's called, that's called the PCE, personal consumption expenditures. That's the Fed's preferred metric of inflation, Hank, not CPI. CPI is somewhat of an artificial construct that 
it does impact government contracts. I was a formal, former federal uh, examiner with the Securities and Exchange Commission early in my career, mm -hmm. and all of our pay adjustments were based off of CPI. We know that cost of living adjustments with, uh, uh, with various forms of government programs are also based on CPI. But CPI is not what we spend money on as a nation. So the Federal Reserve does look at CPI, but they also look at uh, that Im important core PCE indicator. But the inflation numbers that the Federal Reserve focuses in on is really this uh, the core number, which strips out food and energy. Right. And Hank, the reason, the big part of the reason I did, we put that in as a, uh, a, a little bit of a, a, I guess a little bit of levity, the chart on the Phillies and the McRib being on the menu. Right. But ultimately, inflation and the mm -hmm. Fed's outlook for inflation is going to dictate the price of stocks going forward. It's a, it's a simple recipe. The pace of disinflation is going to dictate how aggressive and how much longer the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates. And that will dictate whether or not we fall into a recession or we're off to the races and we did hit the low at the end of September and, uh, and we're off to a, uh, you know, an expansion of this bull market. But we did get some good news with the October CPI report, Hank. The market right. was looking for, as you can see here, one half of 1% month over month. So this is not the, the headline number that everyone looks at, which is looking completely in the rearview mirror. Where were we at um, from October to October? That number is still 7.8%, still elevated by all historic norms. But the Federal Reserve's looking at these month over month data points. And what you can see here, Inc., is a major drop Mm -hmm. um, very much, very similar to what we saw last summer when Delta was working its way through the economy and we started to see a slowdown in economic activity. That was a really good sign and was, was really the genesis for this rally in stocks. And on the, on the next page, um, yeah. the team at Virtue Capital Management and Tiber Cosmolan Associates, we're examining all of the underlying subcomponents. There are over 80 subcomponents that feed into this uh, CPI calculation. And we're seeing some good news, Hank. Uh, when you look here, energy prices are declining, food prices are declining month over month. We're seeing goods prices. I think everyone uh, realizes that we probably ordered way too much stuff during COVID as we were locked in uh, locked in our homes for the better part of it, over a year. Sure. In some cases here in, here in the Chicago area for close to two years. Um, but I think when we look at this, these data points, the softness or slowness that we're seeing at Target and Walmart is unique to those companies because they, they over planned and built up too much inventory. People that have been that were sheltered in place, uh, you were buying TV screens, you were buying furniture, end tables. People have bought enough of that, Hank, and so we're seeing goods prices really fall off a cliff. That light blue line, mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's a real encouraging sign. Now, the shelter, the services component, that orange line, that's the part the Federal Reserve is worried about. And we know from studying history that that orange orange bar uh, is, does have some delay in it. And Hank, mm -hmm. we'll unpack yeah. that in a second. But I think we're seeing the market uh, inflation did peak. You can see there in June, and we've had four sequential declines in, in inflation. That's a reason. That's really the reason that the markets have had a nice little rally here. Uh, in October and into mid-November. Well, yeah. Well, okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Phil, I'm going to get you know the one the housing the housing story, especially when we're seeing uh, prices on starting to come down. We're seeing that uh, basically housing is starting to take some hits, and I think there's a core, some core numbers coming out uh, this morning again with regard to housing. But so far, things that I'm reading, even here in Middle uh, Tennessee, they're talking about. I think there was a recent article. I was trying to remember if it was Market Watch or the Journal, but basically about a 20 percent projecting a 20 percent um, drop in in housing prices so lots to cover i'm going to get a quick break in and then we'll be back uh, with uh, phil cosmala and jeremy join us here we'll be right back on a retirement report